Welcome everybody on YouTube. Um, in this video, I wanted to give uh, an introduction to two example problems that you might solve via linear programming. The first problem is really the hello world um, problem that, that you might see in any linear programming class. It's how to design a healthy diet. And uh, there are cultural reasons why you're supposed to present this example first. It, it's just how many people, better instructors than, than me, have, have done it before. All right, so uh, this is the take on a healthy diet application coming from the Matthew Sack and Gardner book. So we run a restaurant and we serve burgers, hot dogs, not so healthy stuff. And we got a decree that we need to start um, making our meals up to certain standards. So every time we serve a, a full course meal, we have to have so much vitamin A, vitamin C, and dietary fiber. Otherwise, the Colorado Health Board of Education is gonna clamp down on us. So every dish we serve, we need at, at least um, 0.5 milligrams of vitamin A, 15 milligrams of vitamin C, and four grams of fiber per kilogram, or per dish, I guess. Okay, so we serve hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, those are the top sellers. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mash of vegetables. It's gonna be a mash containing carrots and cabbage and cucumbers, okay? And we're gonna make like a little salad or a mash of carrots, cabbage, and cucumbers. And we're gonna serve it as a side dish with every uh, hamburger and hot dog meal that people order, okay? And our question is, well, okay, this is not good, but um, we're cheapskates and we want to combine carrots and cabbage and cucumbers in the cheapest way. To get up to the required amount of vitamin A, C, and, and fiber, okay? But we don't, we don't wanna pay too much. So this is how much it costs for carrots and cabbage and cucumbers. And we don't wanna pay, pay too much. Maybe it's because we're cheapskates, but maybe the better reason is the leftover money we get to uh, donate to, uh, to yeah. <laughs> Jack is laughing at me. Oh, sorry, Jack, I just mentioned your name on, on YouTube. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Okay, so, right. Here we've listed how much vitamin A um, carrots have, so 35 milligrams per kilogram. And this is how much vitamin C and how much fiber they have. So what is our optimization problem? We're trying to minimize the cost. So let's first choose our variables. X1 is going to be the uh, kilograms or grams of carrots. And X2 is going to be the kilograms of cabbage. And X3 is going to be the kilograms of cucumber. We're trying to minimize cost. So how do I get the cost? Well, I have to pay 0.75 pounds for every unit of carrots, plus 0.5 pounds for every unit of cabbage. Pounds, pounds is our, sorry, pounds is not a unit of weight here. Pounds is our, um, or maybe these are euros. Okay, yeah. We have to pay 0.75 euros for every unit of carrots. We have to pay 0.5 euros for every unit of cabbage. And we have to pay um, 0.15 euros for every unit of cucumber. We're trying to minimize costs. Later in this class, we're going to essentially recast every optimization problem as a maximization problem. And you can do that. If we instead wanted to maximize something, just multiply this function by negative one, and then we're trying to maximize it.
Okay. But we have these constraints. We need to serve folks a healthy vegetable side dish. So our constraints are, well, first, we can't serve them a negative amount of carrots or a negative amount of cabbage or a negative amount of cucumber. That would just be unethical, impossible. Also, we sort of have a vitamin A constraint. We need to serve enough vitamin A. We also have a vita vitamin C constraint. Ooh. And we also have a fiber constraint. Okay, so what is the vitamin A constraint? Well, 35 times the amount of carrots plus 0.5 times the amount of cabbage plus 0.5 times the amount of pickles has to be at least the required amount of vitamin A. And then our vitamin C constraint is 60 times the amount of carrots plus 300 times the amount of cabbage plus 10 times the amount of cucumbers has to be at least our 15 milligrams of vitamin C. And then our fiber constraint is that 30 times the amount of carrots plus 20 times the amount of cabbage, plus 10 times the amount of cucumbers, has to be at least uh, our four grams of fiber. Questions so far? We won't, uh, we won't solve this today, but I'll tell you the solution. Um, the solution is we're gonna write these uh, amounts of carrots, cabbage, and cucumbers in grams instead of kilograms, but whatever. So the optimal solution is 9.5 grams of carrots and cabbage will be 38 grams and pickled cucumbers will be 290 grams per dish. And the cost of this is 0.07 euros. So we're doing so pretty cheaply. Those numbers are all rounded. One thing I should say is that this solution might not satisfy other priorities or constraints you might have you might come along and say, wow, that's way too much cabbage. Nobody's gonna like this dish. And so what's often done is, is people will solve one linear program, find out they really have more constraints than they told the algorithm at first, and then just add in an extra constraint. So you might come along here and add in an extra constraint, say, you know, maybe I only reasonably be, expect to be able to sell my, my food if I have at most, um, you know, um, 100 grams of cabbage. So, so you add in it an extra constraint for those. This actually sort of happened in the following sense. So George Danzig is one of the heroes of this class. He invented the simplex algorithm. And he did so, you know, when it was hard to get access to computers. But once he got computer access, he tried to optimize his diet. So he plugged in all of the, um, the foods he ate and he plugged in these uh, nutrition constraints and he plugged in the prices and he, he sort of said, how much do I need to spend if I want to live healthfully? The first time he ran this algorithm, the optimization problem said, hey, George, you should drink seven liters of vinegar a day. That should be your diet. And he said, huh, that's not so appealing to me for other reasons, and it's probably not healthy. You know, he probably didn't correctly model all of the health constraints. So he added in a constraint. Okay, let's, let's keep my vinegar uh, amount below a reasonable level. And then the next time he ran this program, the computer told him to eat 200 bouillon cubes, cubes a day, which is also pretty hilarious. You know, and, and he said, no, I don't want to eat 200 bouillon cubes a day. So he kept adding on, on more constraints. Um, 
So the moral of this is like modeling is hard. And you should not be super confident that you can model the real world by mathematics. I mean, you should try, but you need to refine your models. So maybe you make a model for how the